Hello and welcome to another Rugby Slate Animator tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to take you through some tricks and tips to get the most out of the tool. If this is your first time using the animator, I recommend going over to another video on our channel that will take you through the basics and how to get the tool working. So what I'm going to do is take this animation and then go through and fix all the mistakes I find. So as you can see here, you've got the 10 passing to the 12. And while the ball is in flight, so in this frame here, the 12 remains stationary. This doesn't look realistic to real life, as obviously the number 12 will continue running and hit the ball at pace. So what we need to do is at this frame, take the 12 and move him forward. A little trick for you there is if you click on the ball and the player at the same time, you'll be able to grab both those items and move them around together like they're connected. So I've also moved the remaining three players outside the 12 just to continue the running lines they're running. So now if we look at that, it looks a bit more realistic and the 12 runs on at pace. If we now look at the next pass, where you've got the 12 going to the 13, you see that there's no time where the 13 actually holds the ball. This is very common for people to do as they just think they need to pass the ball down the line, when actually in real life, the 13 will obviously take a few steps forward. To complete this, I'm going to add a frame. I'm going to add it in the next frame of this, so between five and six. Click Add Frame, go to that frame, move the ball and the 13 forward as well as continue the running lines of the 15 and the 14 outside that player. So now we see if we go right back, the 12 gets the ball, pass to the 13, the 13 takes some steps and the 15 carries onwards. Obviously because I'm editing this, the 15 is running line is a bit disrupted. So that sort of takes me on to one of the topics I wanna to talk about. It's a lot easier if you just get this right the first time. If you start from the beginning, make sure all your passing's done and correct the first time as you go through. Now this is working a lot more smoothly. We'll then go on to the final play. So you can see the 12 is now fixed, the pass to the 13, that 15 carries on moving, takes a few steps, and then the 14 is the last mistake we've got here. So you can see the 14 actually stops running while the ball is in flight. So what we need to do for this is probably take the 14 back a few steps in this keyframe, and then when we move it forward, it's already at the place we want the ball to be caught. Now, if we play the animation all the way through, just hitting play with the space bar. You can see that all the players actually continue running and it looks far more realistic than what we had before. Obviously, there are some bits where the players stop and start and the timing looks a little bit weird, but all this can be fixed with some of the tricks and tips I'm going to show you later. So if we go back to the start using the arrow keys to go between frames, we can now go into the second thing I like to talk about, which is using the speed options. I can globally slow down the animation as well as speed it up. But where you get real benefit from this is when you start looking at the frame specific speeds. If you use the number 12 for the example, when that 12 receives the ball, they only take a few steps before passing off to the 13. Because this frame occurs at the same speed as all the other frames, it looks like the 12 slows down. So what we need to do is increase the speed of that frame. Here we can see it's frame three. So if we go into the drop down and select frame three, and then bring that speed right up, you see when the 12 receives the ball, they continue running at a similar sort of speed as they were before. So the animation as a whole looks a lot more smooth and like normal. Another tip for you is to not see the animator as purely just for creating videos, but also as a presentation tool. I've got a creation here where there's two options for the 10 to pass, either to the 13 or to the 12. Now what would be great is if you could present this to your team, either creating a video very like the one I'm doing right now, or by actually being in the room with them. The issue you might run into though, is if you start looking at this animation and you want to say that the 10 could potentially pass to the 12, depending on where the defenders are, then when the animation continues, you're gonna run into issues with it not playing properly. Now that I've reloaded the animation, you'll see the 10 passes to the 13, just as before. However, now when I give the presentation, what I'm gonna do is turn auto saving off. So I'm gonna go up in the menu and then go down to auto save keyframe and then click on that slider to turn it off. Now, when I go back through, pause on a keyframe and then change either where items or players are and then continue playing the animation, it snaps back to how it was originally in the animation. If I do want to make any changes to the actual animation itself, for example, if I want to change where this 13 ends up running at the end, all I need to do is manually hit save frame and then you can see that has now made the change. This is great for giving presentations as you're able to manipulate players and point out where players could be and not actually affect the animation at all. I hope this video has been useful for you. If you have any specific questions, feel free to comment below 
or on the Rugby Slate Animator website. If you go into the FAQs page, there is a contact form there where you can contact us directly. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for your ongoing support of Rugby Slate.